Friends, family, loyal followers, internet strangers, I have another watch review. This is another Watch Gang watch. I know what it is, but I won't tell you until after I open it, but I think you'll like it. It is super cool. I'm actually really excited. It is a retro watch, and it's a nice one. And this is an example of me, air quotes, losing the watch gang wheel. I'm very happy with my loss because it's a super cool watch. And there you go. I think this is called Duke So... Uh, do so or do so i don't know I, I don't speak french i apologize i try my best i come from a dutch and argentine background so uh you know i guess it's more germanic than it is french. i don't know Dutch comes from french something do so i guess all right somebody correct me in <laughs> in the comments i apologize all right here we go this is a very nice box by the way this box is gigantic super cool and even more coolness, now it's a, a wooden box that goes to a plastic box. Very excited. You know, always excited when it's like you open a box and there's another box and then open that box and there's another box. You know, it's like the anticipation. I mean, they know, they know our age group, gentlemen. They know. Let me clean that. It's kind of good. All right. Let's see what this is. Oh, foam pad. Excellent. There we go. The uh, Duso, Duso, whatever. Concilio Black Fume. And this is a nice watch. <sighs> Love it. Love it. All right. Let's watch this video. Duso, a vintage Swiss brand reimagined. As with many Swiss brands, the Dussault name disappeared by the mid-1970s amidst the quartz crisis. In 1995, however, Dussault saw a new life with the purchase of rights and name by Dartmouth Brands. Looking to revitalize the name as a solid and affordable luxury brand, they released their first modern vintage interpretation in 2001. Dussault currently offers a variety of vintage and classic styles. Based out of the UK, Dartmouth Brands produces other high-quality affordable watch brands such as Aviate, RGMT, and Spinnaker. The watches, while manufactured under strict tolerances in Hong Kong, are assembled using only the highest quality parts sourced from around the world. Movements are typically from Japanese brands such as Citizen, Miyota, Seiko, and Swiss manufacturers such as Ronda and ETA, while other parts such as the bracelet, case, and crystals are sourced from Spain, the UK, and Asia. Across boulders and boardrooms, from desk to dive, each Dussault is built with a regard for real-life use and utility, as much as with a flair for style. All right, guys, I know we've already talked about this, but it's worth mentioning. Uh, very nice construction, uh, the box. Like, I know a lot of people don't really keep their boxes, but I think, obviously, the point of this is to kind of uh, give a little bit more prominence to the, uh, um, you know, to this brand. Because Duso was a nice brand uh, in the 50s and 60s. They were quite well known in Switzerland. Probably less so in the United States, but uh, more so in Europe. And, uh, you know, obviously they're trying to bring that back, Dartmouth Brands. Um, and I think it's really cool that they are putting in the effort. Not everybody keeps the boxes, but, you know, you see a lot of, like, what Omega comes with and uh, Rolex, you know, which, which they're trying to at least sort of... Uh, obviously this isn't a Rolex, it's not an Omega, but they're at least trying to sort of give that impression that... Uh, at least it is of that ilk, right? It's not, but uh, it still is a good, good quality watch. Let's put that off the side there. Uh, a couple things <clears throat> has a uh, two-year warranty, which is which is spectacular. Uh, at least I think so. Um, and of course, I got mine from Watch Gang. So uh, you know, with this, even though it's not filled out, I have a formal receipt and everything that I can use in case I need something. 
but I usually don't expect it. I mean, how often do people really go and uh, try and claim warranty? I suppose what may happen a lot of times people will, uh, unlike a really expensive watch, right? If I spent, I don't know, five, six thousand dollars on a watch, I am probably going to expect that if it's scratched or something on the bezel, I'm really going to want that to get taken care of because that's going to be an important deal to me because I spent $5,000 on it. Now let's get this stuff off. I may fast forward this because I don't want to waste your time. All right, well, that was a huge pain in the butt. Let's look at look at all the stuff I pulled off of this. This is this is ridiculous. It's it's like it's like they really didn't want me to get this watch out. I mean, look, what am I going to do with the? Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> so, um, very nice watch. Uh, I really like this watch. I'm going to just going to start going down the list of things. Uh, this is model number. DX 2007-11 and very clearly you can see that it is styled in the uh, format of uh, basically late mid late 1960s um, probably around the time of the James Garner uh, movie Grand Prix something like that or possibly early 1970s definitely a diver's watch very cool I really like this I love the orange uh, it's not, it's not overdone. Uh, I think it's really just perfect. And I'm going to try and give you some good shots of Rolex Takes like inside. I like the dish. Uh, it's it's quite nice. Of course, it's an automatic. Um, the bezel is uh, pretty well aligned. Uh, I've heard one or two people have said that they've had issues with that, but mine was was quite good. Uh, I don't see any issues with it. Uh, you can see that uh, as the movement goes around, it's. Of course, you know, it's not quartz, so it's not a big deal, but it's pretty much on the mark. But uh, the bezel is 120 clicks. Um, for those who want to know how to easily count that, you can just go uh, in 15-minute increments, and you just multiply by four. So real, <laughs> real simple. A lot of people go all the way around, you know, 101, 102, 103. No, don't, don't do that. <laughs> it's so much easier to do this a little tight but that's okay i mean that's that's typically what what you want right let me clean off this uh my fingerprints but uh gosh you know i the reason why i spend all the time normally i don't take all this this crap off um i'll leave most of it on just take a few things off because then i turn around and sell it but i like this watch enough that i intend to actually keep this watch um i love vintage watches I do a lot of vintage watch restorations. I've got a couple that I'm in the middle of doing. This is a, a vintage Timex that I've completely uh, redone and quite nice. Uh, I'm working on a, uh, a Connell. Um, gosh, I've got a bunch of them. Let's see, what's this? Where's my, where's my, uh, oh, Marcel and C. And I've got the uh, trim ring. This is going to be a nice diver. It's going to be so awesome when it's done. But anyways, I don't want to bore you guys with that. Uh, gorgeous watch. I love the styling. I love the fact that this is early 70s, late 60s. I'm going to wear this. This is absolutely one that I intend to keep. I love the bracelet too. It is very similar to my the old Wenger designed. Uh, this is, feels slightly better quality. <clears throat> it is uh, solid lengths, of course. You know I always complain about those solid those non-solid lengths, the stamp and roll, drive me nuts. Uh, I prefer the added weight. Uh, it's not much. Uh, this is really sort of the style of the President Rolex kind of watch. And, and I like the case design too, the way it's beveled and the way it just kind of sits and looks. It's 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 really a gorgeous, gorgeous design reminiscent of what they used to produce back in the, the late 60s and 70s. It is an automatic movement. I won't put too much effort into it. Uh, it's the standard uh, NH35. You'll see a picture of me holding it. Uh, I took it off because every time I take a watch off, uh, every time I buy a watch, I always open it up 
and I cleaned the uh, crystal. You know, they always get a coating on the inside due to manufacturing, and that leads to a little bit of spotting. I didn't really see any, but I could tell once I opened it and started to clean it, it was a little tacky on the inside of glass. Nothing that a uh, little bit of <clears throat> humidity from your breath and a good uh, cloth can't clean, can't clean up. I don't even use any chemicals. Of course, you want to make sure that you always use this because you want to blow out anything. But see, it's perfect. You can't see anything inside. Did a good job cleaning it. So again, very happy with it. Uh, NH35 movement, uh, pretty solid. You know, accuracy is within a second, one, one and a half seconds a day. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see, what else can we talk about? You know what? One of the most important things about a vintage watch is the size. So I'm going to go ahead and just start getting right into that. Because I know you guys are going to be interested in that. So let's start measuring that. I want to say the case design is probably about, let's see, 40 millimeter. Yep, so good 40 millimeter. Let's see, the lug is... Twenty millimeter, and the case depth is, we'll say twelve. So good size, right? I mean, forty millimeter is quite nice, right? I, I know a lot of these older vintage watches, so let's see if I can find one. I've got a nice one here. Ooh, what's this? <clears throat> oh, I got a vintage Ingersoll that I'm working on. You know, this is typically the size the watches during that time. Sometimes they got a little bit bigger. Right, you can look at the uh, Marcel and C that I'm working on, and you can see there, it's pretty much about the size. And so that that is, this is a little bit bigger. This is probably a 38 millimeter, and this is a 40. So it's it keeps with the style of the time, but it gives you a little bit better, uh, at least more modern look. Uh, water resistance. So it is 100 meters, 10 ATM, 10 bar, for my European friends. Well, I guess 100 meters is also pretty European, right? When I say it's the only one not using the, <laughs> the metric system. But um, it has a screw-down crown, which really helps with that. I know a lot of people get upset when I say a screw-down crown helps with water resistance. But you know what? It just does, right? There's a gasket on the back, in the back of the crown, that seals tightly against that. Uh, you don't even really need a crown guard because it's protecting the, it's protecting the stem. And there's also one on the shaft. So quite nice, you're not gonna run into any issues, it's not gonna pop out and get water in it, or at some point it has uh, the uh, the initials for Dussault stamped on the, on the crown. It says it prominently in the back. Let's see if I can get it to focus well. And uh, it's laser etched, I really like that. Uh, not stamped or any of the other nonsense. It's really, really well done. Let me just make sure that it looks good good alignment uh so i like that really well it's also on the the buckle which is a butterfly uh, of course it is a cnc billeted stainless steel the entire case and everything is 316 stainless steel really like that polished on the edge brushed on the top very very well done and of course the name is prominently on there and it lets you know that it's an automatic um see what else can we talk about there's not much more to it i said already 120 clicks on the bezel which is great so this is a good solid uh diver or snorkeling watch i'd say more of a snorkeling watch this would be something that you would be proud to wear uh if you're just kind of going around town uh, dressing kind of fancy but mostly casual you, you probably wouldn't wear this with a suit but you certainly could uh, let's look at the loom. I'm not sure what to expect. There is no loom on the on the ring, so obviously wouldn't do it for any serious diving. This is more for the style, right? A lot of them were like that. Uh, like here's one, right, from my Marcel and C, which was also considered a dive watch, and there's no loom on that. You're not really going to go diving with something uh, of that nature, but we'll go ahead and look at it and see what it looks like. So real nice, very bright, prominent, uh, no problems on all three hands. I think it looks excellent. There's really no orientation, so you'd have to just kind of know, unfortunately, but that's okay.
All right, let's check out the weight. We'll do it in grams, of course. I'm gonna say about, let me guess, 140. Oh, a little more of that. 152, I'll just say it says 151.8, but I'll say 152 grams. All right, uh, the crystal is 100% sapphire and supposedly anti-reflective coating, but look at that, I can see that. But I'm sure that's fine, not a big deal, but it is a sapphire, it is solid sapphire crystal. You can see it on the back there, should say it, along with all the other good stuff. You know, they always have that on the watches. I've always liked that since, since back in the day. It's stainless steel, 100 meters. Uh, what is that? Automatic movement. Got the model number and says sapphire. But it is solid sapphire and is also supposed to have uh, anti, uh, anti reflective coating for whatever that's worth. So, of course, it also has the date, which is nice. The only thing I don't like about um, the only thing I think that's frustrating about watches, right, that have date and stuff like this and, and is an automatic and a screw down crown is that. Uh, you know, unless you're going to keep it on one of those things that constantly moves it like this to keep the the watch powered. I'll put a picture of those up here if you've never seen them. But uh, if unless you have one of those, every time you use this, you're now going to have to unscrew the crown. All right, you're going to have to unscrew it. And eventually these threads, right, they are cut into the... It doesn't look like it's pressed in. Uh, from Honestly, it looks like it might be... You might actually just I uh, can't tell you know I'll, I'll try to find out and i'll post comments but sometimes it's actually pressed into the case and so you can replace that and other times it is actually drilled into the case i would think it's better to have it pressed in but of course every time you do that you now have to like uh, and, and i will go ahead and set it let's see oh actually i'll do it like that 10 10 o'clock. Yep, so. But every time I now have to go set it, it's much easier with a quartz, and that's one of the reasons why I like quartz dive watches. Like, here's here's one nice, good, solid watch. It, you know, it's just going to keep the, the date and time, no problem. I never have to fiddle with it. It's just always great. Uh, so, there's a lot to be said for mechanical movements, and I spend a lot of effort restoring them. Um, you know, this is this is this is the thing. I, I love I love working on these old movements. I, I absolutely do. So I'm not going to say I don't enjoy mechanical movements, but there is a lot to be said that if you're actually going to wear a watch, it's much nicer to sometimes just have it be a quartz watch, so you don't have to mess around with with constantly setting the time. Uh, and, you know, if, if you like this style of tick, right, where it is like a tenths of a second, not perhaps just necessarily a second, uh, they do also have the uh, electronic watches. Let's see if I have any around here. I'm trying to see. No. Oh, yeah. I've got this gorgeous uh, Bulova uh, Accutron, which does not work. So I got to fix it, but it is in fantastic shape. So that also has a similar style where it just sweeps and it's actually quite nice. But I think I pretty much talked this watch to death. Um, I'm very happy with it. Let's see the, uh, I should, should mention the cost. So the retail price is $640. Uh, I don't think anybody pays that. That's about 490 pounds, uh, euros. I don't know, what would that be, about 550 euros, or euros, as the, I guess it depends on how you're going to say it. Um, I think this is probably more realistically about a $250 watch. That's what I would feel comfortable paying. Uh, I actually paid $117 through Watch Gang, so it was a very good price, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, it's, Of course, it's a, it's a Dartmouth brand, along with Aviate and all the other watches, uh, that I'm I'm very happy with. Very high quality. Highly recommend it. Uh, I like it. I'm not going to sell this one. I'm going to keep it because I love the style. So, all right. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. Uh, any comments or anything else, please also leave them below. 
Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more like this, uh, please also leave recommendations and give it a like. And I uh, really encourage you to subscribe. I really appreciate your patronage. Thank you very much.